Good afternoon, one and all. I hope everyone's well. I am Harley S. McDonald, and many years ago, I lived and worked in this wonderful new and growing community of Forest Grove. Now, I began my life in Rhode Island back on July 21st, 1825. I unfortunately lost my mother at the young age of one, so my father was forced to raise me, and that's much in the area around Providence. I was apprenticed to a Finnish carpenter, where I learned a great deal about, uh, well, the building trades, and uh, I picked up a little architecture knowledge as well. When news of the gold rush from California arrived on the East Coast, well, I packed my bags and boarded the ship Hopewell for what turned out to be a 197-day voyage around the Cape Horn. Now, I was so entranced by the Cape that I sketched it in my diary. Well, we were also very fortunate to have been lucky enough to see a lunar eclipse on the way to California. Well, I arrived in San Francisco on August 9th, 1849. The harbor was full of ships, but most of them were empty because the sailors, well, they'd all jumped ships and ran off to the gold fields. <laughs> yeah, the city was in a rapid rise of construction. But because all the people, well, squalor abounded, after landing, well, I found out I could make $16 a day building. <laughs> I enjoyed working with my hands and my brain, and the money was good, so I took the job. Uh, while in San Francisco, you know, some of my accomplishments were working with the government. Oh, I, and I met Lieutenant William T. Sherman. <laughs> I, I, I built some sash doors out of that newly found redwood. And, uh, well, see, I built the uh, Protestant church, Burgoyne's Bank Building. Uh, oh, the first opera house and a theater. I did manage to do myself some prospecting, too, down in Downeville on the Yuba River, and luck be told, I took out a good deal of gold in just a few months. Now, of course, it was, it was a dangerous occupation. Once, five Indians captured me. They took all my clothes and tied me to a tree, and they were like uh, painting me, coloring me, where they were going like, to shoot their arrows into me. And one of them reached in the pocket of my coat and pulled out a Bible. Well, I, I figured that, that they'd uh, met some missionaries, so they crossed themselves and let me go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, on my way back to San Francisco, I was chased by a grizzly bear. Well, suffice it to say that when I got safely back, well, I got on board the Tarkana and sailed for Astoria, Oregon, where I arrived in mid-July, 1850. From there, I made my way upriver to Portland, where the view was of about a dozen log houses, which was comprised the city of Portland, in the midst of dense forest. Well... Once again, I figured I'd use my building skills, so I got to work. <laughs> I, I built the first pier, uh, I built the first congregational church, uh, a schoolhouse, a brickyard, some government buildings. Oh, and even the first waterworks. And then, then they asked me to build a steamboat. <laughs> yeah, they said this is very important for the growth of Portland. So, her name was the Hoosier, and she was the first steamboat ever on the Willamette River. She steamed between Portland and Oregon City. <laughs> Portland's growing and seemed to have a good future, so I figured I'd go back to Rhode Island and get my beloved wife, Betsy. Yes, that's true. I've been married. I, well, I've been gallivanting around, and I didn't tell you about it. Sorry about that. And my young son, who I had never even met. Now, in 1858, we, we arrived at Forest Grove, where I was going to construct the first congregational church. Now, after that got built, I bid on the new Chimua Indian School that the government wanted. Now, it was going to be bigger than the Carlisle School in Pennsylvania, as they said. So, after a few years of being here, they said that they needed more room. They needed a bigger school. So, we had to build 
five miles north of Salem. Now, my family and I, we, we moved to Salem for 10 years. Yeah. When we then decided to move on back to Forest Grove and enroll the children in the two Wallington Academy. Still building as usual, I, I built our, our house on the corner of Mulberry and Elm Street, which today is uh, Pacific and B. And then I built the uh, Benjamin Cornelius home and the James Robb home. Well, all in what I would call the Italiante Gothic style. Uh, Tall ceilings, big rooms, uh, distinctive stair railings, and uh, polygonal bay windows. <laughs> yeah, then, then it happened. I had a stroke with partial paralysis. Thus, uh, the end of my building days. So we moved in with my son in the uh, Mount Tabor area of Portland. Now, I can honestly say that I love the Northwest and, and, and haven't been involved in the early years of building and, and growth throughout the area. <laughs> Portland, Forest Grove, Hillsboro, Salem, Brownsville, and even parts of Washington State. <laughs> I am proud, proud of all my accomplishments. Well, thank you one and all. Thank you for your time today.